In this video, we will attempt to find the answer to the question, what is Tezos cryptocurrency? So, you know how various devices like laptops and phones have software updates that pop up as notifications from time to time. To get software-related new features or bug fixes, all you need to do is download and install the update on your device during your free time. Easy peasy, right? As it's such a common practice, we cannot imagine this operating differently. However, here's a twist. Imagine what would happen if, with every slight change in, let's say, the iOS operating system, you would have to buy a new iPhone. Especially considering that the average price of a new iPhone circulates around $900. That would be absolutely ridiculous. When it comes to blockchain networks, one project, called Tezos, stands out from the crowd as it aims to avoid this previously mentioned situation happening in the Web3 world. Tezos upgrades its network seamlessly without needing an update, also known as a hard fork, that would split the blockchain into two. In other words, Tezos makes sure its blockchain offers update convenience similar to that of smart devices. As I've mentioned, the project opened the doors to the crypto world in 2014, when Arthur and Kathleen Brightman released a position paper introducing the Tezos protocol. Shortly after the launch, Arthur Brightman released Tezos' white paper, giving more context to the project and how it should work. What is interesting about Tezos' first documentation is that Brightman published both papers under the pseudonym L.M. Goodman. In the white paper, Brightman highlighted that other blockchains, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, face issues with inclusive governance, a problem Tezos Network hoped to solve. The origins of the name Tezos have yet to be discovered. Some crypto enthusiasts suggest that the name came from a Greek word pronounced the same way. A brief translation of this word generally means clever contract. Others claim that developers simply search for an unclaimed, unique and memorable name. In 2015, a few months after the publication of the project's white paper, Brightman's launched the firm Dynamic Ledger Solutions, or DLT. The company was obligated to write the initial code for the protocol. In 2016, the source code was released, and the alphanet for the Tezos protocol hit the web. However, while Brightman's and developers expected to launch the Tezos mainnet in 2017, things took a turn for the worse following its initial coin offering, or ICO, funding round. While the ICO itself was more than successful, as the project managed to bag around $232 million in Ether and Bitcoin, the emergence of a new player mixed the cards for the Tezos team. The management of the collected funds and distribution of Tezos native tokens was entrusted to the newly launched Tezos Foundation, led by Johan Gavers. Behind closed doors, Tezos Foundation planned to use ICO funds to purchase DLT and obtain control of all Tezos operations. Sounds like something from a Santa Barbara episode, doesn't it? Well, the story didn't end there. These developments caused Brightman's and Gavers to get into conflict. As the internal disagreements surrounding the Tezos founders and the new foundation took place, the distribution of the project's native coins got delayed. Due to this, several angry investors filed class action lawsuits against Tezos and DLT, further delaying any plans for the mainnet launch. However, eventually, issues were resolved and the protocol's development resumed. Tezos released its beta net in June of 2018 and launched the mainnet in September of the same year. Now that we know how Tezos came about, it's time to explore what exactly is Tezos in crypto. If we look into the dictionary definition of Tezos, it's described as a self-amending open-source blockchain enabling smart contracts and peer-to-peer -peer transactions. But what exactly does that mean? Let's take a deep dive into Tezos DeFi operations. Like every blockchain network, Tezos relies on a consensus mechanism. If you're still getting familiar with this concept, there are generally two main algorithms, proof-of-work and proof-of-stake. In this video, we will not delve deep into comparing POW with POS, but if you want to know their differences, check my video on this topic. So, what kind of blockchain does Tezos use? The protocol operates on the unique liquid proof-of-stake, or LPOS, algorithm. POS is a method that relies on crypto staking, rather than mining, to verify transactions. In particular, LPOS allows holders to pass on their validation rights to other users without sacrificing their token ownership. It's like lending your friend, let's say, an old DVD player for them to rewatch old home videos from the discs. The player is still yours, and it will be returned when your friend finishes watching the videos. If they are generous enough, you might get a box of chocolate candies for the favor. In the Tezos network, the process of staking the protocol's native coin is called baking. On Tezos, bakers play the same role as validators on the Ethereum network or miners on the Bitcoin blockchain. These roles include verifying transactions, distributing block rewards, and securing the blockchain network. At this point, you might wonder what is so unique about the Tezos LPOS algorithm. Unlike other POS networks, LPOS is more flexible as it eliminates the token lockup period. This means that bakers can unstake their tokens anytime without additional repercussions. Moreover, with this model, bakers can participate in the protocol's governance by voting on various network changes. 
In crypto terms, this means that Tezos operates using on-chain governance. When a certain change on the network is proposed, the native token holders vote on the suggestion. Once the change is approved, the software automatically updates to make the improvements on the network. It is believed that Tezos hopes to eliminate the possibility of blockchain forks by using on-chain governance. In particular, it aims to avoid a blockchain split, which happened to the Ethereum network when it split into two units, Ethereum Classic and the Ethereum we know today. You can find more information about this split in my video covering all aspects of Ethereum Classic. As we now know what is Tezos in the crypto ecosystem, it's time to explore what is Tezos used for. In a nutshell, the blockchain network has several use cases, such as DeFi, gaming, and NFTs. Let's look into each of them, one by one, shall we? Tezos stands tall in the DeFi realm by offering cheap and quick transactions. In particular, the transaction fees on the Tezos network cost an average of one cent. Compared to the Ethereum's average transaction fee of one dollar, it's literally cents. Speed also plays a crucial role. Tezos can handle around 40 transactions per second, while other crypto giants, like Ethereum, can process 15 transactions during the same time. This is more than twice as fast. Thus, taking into account speed and fees, Tezos becomes a popular tool for launching dApps and various protocols. The network is also widely used for non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, where they're hosting several NFT marketplaces. The network is home to various NFT collections as well, for companies like McLaren, Gap, and Red Bull Racing. Impressive, right? Lastly, Tezos hosts several blockchain-based games, including a mobile play-to-earn app, Dogami. In the game, players train their NFT-based digital pets and use them to participate in competitions. Want to know more about Dogami? Leave a comment below and I will consider creating a dedicated video for this NFT-based game. Now that we have covered what is Tezos in crypto and what it is used for, it is time to cover perhaps the most important question. What is Tezos cryptocurrency? In the crypto world, no ecosystem is complete without its native coins, and Tezos is no exception. The network's native coin is XTZ. What is also interesting about the Tezos coin is that some people call it Tez or Tezel. Regardless of what word you use to refer to Tezos coins, let's explore what is XTZ crypto in greater detail. In general, the asset is used as a store of value token, a tool to participate in the network's governance protocol and cover transaction fees. In particular, as of the end of 2023, XTZ coin had a circulating supply of 958 million tokens, while its total supply stood at around 979 million. Getting closer to that billion. It is worth noting that XTZ is considered to be an inflationary token, with an inflation rate of 18% per year, meaning that its overall supply is set to increase over time. Thus, on Tezos, there is no such thing as a limited token supply. As with almost all crypto projects that I cover on this channel, the native cryptocurrency of Tezos, the XTZ coin, can be purchased on major crypto exchanges like Binance and Coinbase. During the initial coin offering, or ICO, of Tezos, around 80% of the tokens were distributed to the funding round participants. On top of that, 20% were distributed to early backers, Tezos Foundation, and Dynamic Ledger Solutions, DLT. So, what is the XTZ cryptocurrency used for? At the beginning of this video, I briefly mentioned that the Tezos native coin is used for baking. Not actual baking of cookies or other sweets, of course. To become a baker on Tezos, investors must hold at least 8,000 XTZ tokens, which are worth around a whopping $7,000 as of me making this video. However, if investors don't have enough, they can always become delegates by giving their baking rights to other bakers. This way, delegates don't act as bakers, but can receive a portion of rewards. It's like working on a group project in school. You all do the same thing, but eventually some students still do more than others. However, at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter because you all receive the same evaluation. Let's break down the process of proposal submission, shall we? Bakers can submit up to 20 governance proposals. Each proposition must proceed through a four-phase voting cycle, which is distributed 23 days apart. In the first phase, bakers submit their proposals, and other protocol governance members vote for or against changes in the network's functionalities. When a proposal receives 80% of the votes, the bakers must create a 48-hour test chain. During those two days, the network members stress test their proposal and make sure that everything works smoothly. If there are any bumps in the road, they inform other Tezos governance members about it. Lastly, after the test period is completed, bakers perform the final vote on whether the proposal should be accepted or rejected. If the proposal receives the necessary votes, bakers can ask to be rewarded for beneficial proposals. Once the update is passed, the invoice will mint a specific amount of XTZ to the baker. As we reach the end of this video, it's time to wrap up what we have learned about what is Tezos in crypto and what is the Tezos cryptocurrency. Tezos is a versatile blockchain platform with a unique self-amending feature that protects the network from splitting into two. 
Apart from offering peer-to-peer -peer transactions and smart contracts, Tezos creates a perfect ecosystem for cheap and fast transactions, NFTs, and gaming. The XTZ coin, often referred to as Tez or Tezel, plays a vital role in the ecosystem's operations. The cryptocurrency is used to cover transaction fees, participate in protocols governance, and store value. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found value in my Tezos' animated explainer and are ready to start using this network. If you liked it, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts about Tezos below. See you in my next video. Bye!